Hello and welcome to Edupedia World. So right now we're inside Cinema 4D and I've opened up an old scene that I once made. Um, this is a scene uh, that's supposed to look something like a city inspired by like New York and stuff and it's um it's very simple. I was not very good at Cinema 4D when I made this so you will most likely be able to make something that's much better. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to render this image out as a, a multi-pass image. So right now I'm just rendering it in the viewport and um, right now it's just rendering it, it as a single image. But we want to set up the multi-pass and I will show you guys how you can do it. So I'll just let it render so you can see what I've been up to. And I think this is about it. So we we'll first want to uh, figure out um, which uh, channels we are using. So by channels, I mean if you go into uh, your render settings, then you want to enable the multipass. Okay. And then you want to um, figure out which passes you want to um, have rendered. So you want to first just say at all the image layers. This is the easiest way in my opinion. And um, this is all your different channels. So you have a channel called ambient. You've got diffuse, specular shadow reflection, blah, 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 blah. You want to figure out, look at your scene, figure out which channels are being used. So in my case, I know I'm using the ambient because that's the sky here. This is the ambient. I've got the diffuse because I've just got, I've got basic colors. Um, sorry, if I open up this guy, you can see I've got the color channel. That means I've got diffuse. If I open up this one again, I can see I've got reflection. I've also got specular right here. And I've got the reflection. Where is it here? The, refle the reflection. I've got reflections. Um, so ambient, diffuse, specular. I've also got shadows because if you were to take a look at the light I'm using, I'm actually using a physical sky. And the physical sky has shadows turned on. Sky, sun, shadow, area shadows. So you can see I've got shadows enabled. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see I've also got ambient occlusion set here in my effects. So that means I also need ambient occlusion. I've got transparent windows, as you can see right here. That means I've also got uh, some refraction. And also, of course, the reflection, I already talked about that. Um, global illumination. That has not been enabled in my uh, render settings. Therefore, I don't need the global illumination. The global il illumination will, in this case, just be a black or a completely white image. Caustics, I've no, got no caustics, no atmosphere, and I've also not got any post effects. So these are the um, channels that I'm left with. Ambient, diffuse, specular, shadow, reflection, refraction, ambient occlusion. What I want to do now is go into my output settings and change this to something like 1920 by 800. And I can see by these lines that I'm going to get a wide screen image, a very wide image. I'll just set it to render the current frame and then I'll go into my save options. Here you can see I've already set up my um, folders so you just want to um, go into save and this will save a regular image. This will just save the normal image that you're used to. And so you'll find a folder and just save it there. I will, I will use TIFF PSD layers, 32 bits, and um, I'm not going to use any alpha channel. Then here in the multipass, you also want to just find a location, give it a name, uh, city, city multipass will be my choice. I'm also going to say this as a 32-bit uh, PSD TIFF layer. And uh, by default, 
multi-layer file will be ticked, you want to untick that. And um, this is going to be enough for now. You will see that there is something called a compositing project file. We are going to be using that later. So right now we will just be doing the multi-pass image render uh, by itself. So what I will do, I'll first go through my settings to make sure that everything is as I want it. Make sure that my transparency, refraction, reflection, shadow is turned on because if they are not turned on, I won't see them in my render and I won't get them in my multipass. So just make sure everything looks as it should. Um, I'll go into my physical tab and change it from low to medium just to get a nicer picture and I'll also bump up the contrast to something like 10% in my ambient occlusion. So this should be it for my render settings by now. And I am ready to hit the render to picture viewer. So right now, if I go over to image, you'll see my image starting to be rendered. And this is going to look exactly how it looked in the viewport. But as you can see, I've got some other options. And as you can see on the image, I've got now seven different layers. If I go into single pass, I can just click on one of these layers and then that will give me that exact channel. So the refraction, this is how the refraction looks. The reflection, this is all my reflections in one layer. Ambient occlusion, this is how that looks. Ambient, you can see my sky, the shadows, they are actually blue. The specular, and the reason why this is black is because um, there's no specular in this part of the image. So they are going to probably appear in this bottom part of the picture. And then the diffuse, this is just the basic color. I can also watch this as a multipass where I can turn on and off the different layers. So this is without any refraction. This is the image without reflections. You can see how much they do. And I can also turn the intensity up and down. So right now I'll just let this uh, finish rendering and I'll get back to you guys. So right now the image is just rendering the last little bit right here. And bam wham, here is the final image. It's looking pretty decent. So what I'm focusing on now is not the actual render because it's not looking the best in the world but what I'm focusing on is um, the multipass so if we open up After Effects and create a new project new project I want to save these changes then I can go in and find the images that I've rendered so this is the folder that I chose and um, I can just select all the images and um, import them like this. And we will now be able to uh, start creating our, um, our scene. So we want to just take all these, uh, all these passes and not the image and then just drag them into a uh, new composition. And we want to choose single composition. There we go. And we'll get something that looks a bit like this. And this is of course not what we want. And that's because the blending mode of all these layers have been set to normal. So I first want to just arrange these guys a little bit. I want to put the diffuse uh, at the bottom of everything. And then I can start changing the um, blending modes. So if we go back into Cinema 4D, and open up this picture viewer. Then we can actually see if we click on the different layers, then we will be able to see what blending mode uh, we should be using. So you see refraction, it has already been set to add. And that's because refraction, if we look at refraction, 
it has a dark background. So if you add something with, a, something with a dark background on top, the dark background will basically become transparent. If we look at the ambient occlusion, the ambient occlusion is not... Um, that's basically the opposite, so it's black on white. And in order to punch out the white and make that transparent, we need to use a multiply op operation. The diffuse, since that is just pure color, we want to use a normal um, blending mode. And uh, that's also the reason why the diffuse has to be at the bottom. Because if I were to put the diffuse, if you go back into After Effects, if I were to put the diffuse in something like here in the, into the middle, then the reflection, the ambient occlusion, and the ambient won't be seen because the diffuse is going to block everything up. It's going to act like a solid picture. So let's go in and start changing these blending modes. For the specular, set it to add shadow, multiply, the refraction, add, the reflection, add, ambient, um, add, and the ambient occlusion, multiply. And there we go. Now we have actually got our image. And um, we've got full control over everything. So we can go into, um, let's say, our shadow. And then we can start controlling the shadow. You can see the shadows in the image are disappearing. Let's try and add something like a curves to the shadow. And if we drag this down, then you'll be able to see that we're able to um, darken these shadows. There we go. I'd like to have a little bit more shadow, and therefore I want to drag this down. We can also go into the ambient occlusion, and maybe see what that does. Sorry, not the ambient, the ambient occlusion that's called AO. You can see what that does. If I add the curves adjustment and drag this down a little bit, we are going to get some more contrast. And that's what we want. Let's try and change the ambient. And as you can see, this is going to be our horizon. So if we add the curves adjustment to the ambient, we'll be able to brighten up the background a little bit. And for this picture, I would like to just decrease the reflections a little bit. So as you saw in uh, Cinema 4D, we spent about eight and a half minutes rendering uh, this image. And uh, I suddenly realized that I wanted to decrease the shadows and brighten up the sky and change the, sh uh, the reflection, sorry, increase the shadows and ambient occlusion and decrease the reflections. And uh, if I had to re-render this every time, I would be spending much more than I'd have than I've done now. I would I spend eight and a half minutes for just this one frame. But imagine if this was like a, a thirty second animation that would have taken a few th a, almost a day to render. And uh, if I had to re-render just to change the uh, the reflections and the shadow, then I would be spending days making this when I can just change the settings like this with a multi-pass render. So this should give a very good example for why a multi-pass render is great. And the next thing we want to do, and that's going to be in the next video, I will show you how you can get Cinema 4D to do all of this for you. Make a file that you can just open up and all these blending modes will be set by default. So. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching Etiopedia World. Stay tuned for more videos.